Hey there, Capricorn. Welcome to your reading for July 2019. Thank you so much for tuning in. So this is going to be a general energy reading, yes? So please take what resonates and leave what doesn't. If you'd like a look into your own personal situation, please don't hesitate to email me. All of the information is in the description box below. You'll also find in the description box that I have put back the links to calculate both your Western and Eastern charts. I really wanted to put that back in for a while and I finally have done it. Um, I, just merely for the sheer fact of giving you guys the ability or the the option to, to you know, calculate both your charts and then to find what resonates best with you. Personally, I find that I resonate more with my Eastern chart than my Western chart. Eastern astrology versus Western astrology. Western astrology is often um, referred to as uh, tropical astrology, whereas Eastern is often referred to as Vedic or sidereal astrology. Um, so calculate those, check them out. If you want to go on a bit of a bin video binge, you could do it that way and then just figure out, see which resonates for you the most. Yes? Um, 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 also keep in mind that these messages are timeless. So just because it's coming through for the month of July 2019, it doesn't mean it has to resonate at that time. It could resonate at any time. Yes? All right, guys. So let's get into your reading for you, Capricorn. I have a bit of a pre-shuffle here for you. Uh, and the first cards, well, the first two cards that came out, they came out together. It was the star and the two of wands. And this is telling me that you're in a, you're at a pretty strong crossroads for some of you. Um, you're having to make a decision as to which direction you want to go in next. Um, and the advice here or what you're doing to make this decision is following your heart, following your inner self, following your inner light, your inner guidance in order to make this decision. I kind of, I really honestly, I feel like this is a pretty big decision for you to make combine uh, between the energies of the star, which is a uh, major arcana. Um, these are the major overarching cycles that we go through. Also the spiritual cycles that we go through. Whereas the minor arcana represented here in the two of wands is like the mundane everyday things, smaller cycles that we go through. The major arcana are the big, big, long cycles, often fairly long cycles that we go through. And so also the wand suit can represent spirituality, um, your own spirit um, and that kind of thing. So what this is kind of saying to me is like you have a big decision that you are wanting to make, needing to make, trying to make, um, and either you're approaching it from following your intuition to figure out what the best, best, best <laughs> direction for you to move in next is, or you're needing to follow your intuition. It could also be that things are pretty unclear for you right now and that you have maybe just one small focal point of light to guide you in this moment of your life right now um, and so you're needing to follow that. Okay. The other card that the next card that came out is the six of swords, which is all, which is telling me you're really moving on from something. Um, for some of you, this could be a relationship, not going to lie, uh, whether this is a romantic relationship or a business relationship or just a friendship. Okay. I'm getting the, from the six of swords, I'm getting that either this transition is really rough for you in sense of like emotional turmoil or the the situation the dynamic that you're moving away from and what about it in whatever way that manifests for you it doesn't it, it can be a relationship it can be romantic it can be career it could be anything but um what you're moving away from was probably a really rough situation to be a part of anyway and so there's a bit of relief that comes in with the six of swords that i'm feeling for this energy for you right now capricorn but there it's not without its trials and tribulations, we'll say, okay? And finally, what's underneath the deck here is the Empress. So this is energy of um, faith, I'm hearing, which is also coming through with the, with the, the star. Um, the Empress is another major arcana. So this is a deep spiritual, strong spiritual energy. But what I'm getting from this is the Empress is saying that you have everything that you need. You are abundant and the universe loves you unconditionally and will help you once the universe is that, <laughs> that 
because sometimes the energies of the empress can be so unconditionally loving that she's just straight up en enabling. Um, and the universe, if you want to look at it that way, the universe kind of is that enabling parent because the universe is not in the business of saying no. The universe will only ever give, say yes to you. Now, that doesn't mean that it's going to bring you what you're asking for right away. Sometimes the timing just is not right. Sometimes having something at that moment in time just is not the best for your highest good. But the universe will never tell you no. So that's why you find yourself in situations where you just keep manifesting disaster after disaster or undesirable situation after undesirable situation because you're just you're putting that out into the universe and the universe is just like all right cool that's what you want that's what you get here here you go here you go oh you want that too here you go i mean it's never going to tell you no so just be careful with that yeah make sure you're staying in alignment with your highest good um you're staying you know, you're staying in a high vibration, even though you're making a transition, Capricorn. You're definitely making a transition. And that Six of Swords energy is really just saying to me that whatever it is you're, you're going through now or whatever it is you've been through in the past that you're moving away from, it's all been pretty rough. And then, and then the Queen of Wands just came out woo, with the Two of Cups. You might be dealing with a, uh, an air sign. I want to say, I wanted to, I'm not an air sign, I'm sorry, a fire sign. I wanted to say Sagittarius, but I just did the Sagittarius reading right before I started this one, so it could be why. Um, but it could be, I mean, the Queen of Wands represents Aries mostly. There could be an Aries in your chart. You could be dealing with an Arian. Um, could it be any fire sign, though, Leo or Sagittarius. Uh, so some of you could be moving away from a really difficult relationship with an Aries or a fire sign female or feminine energy. Um, or you could be this female or feminine energy that has strong fire placement or maybe just significant fire placement for you in this situation. Um, also, the Queen of Wands energy is cardinal energy. So this is probably you taking some sort of action in moving forward. Absolutely. All right, Capricorn. Let's see what we've got for your month. Hi, Spirit. Please make me a clear channel for all Capricorns, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus. Please bring forward the best messages to serve the highest good of all involved for the month of July 2019. Thank you so much, Spirit. All right, Capricorn, five shuffles for you. Whoa. We're not taking that. We're not taking that. Let's try this again. Five shuffles for you, Capricorn. One, two, Capricorn, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus. Last shuffle for you here, Cap. Cappy Cap Capson. And five. Boop. All right. Overall energy. Ooh. Well, we're starting you off with you. <laughs> the devil. Um, this is your energy. Very interesting. So uh, before I started my, my session here to do these readings for the, um, the Zodiac signs for July, uh, I set an intention to do three readings for the day. Um, I started with Sagittarius. I'm doing Capricorn now, and then Aquarius is next. And as I was sitting and meditating and just channeling and collecting the energies of those three signs to do these readings for you, you kept coming forward a lot, Capricorn. Um, you were coming forward more than, than Sagittarius or Aquarius. Now, I figured, well, maybe there's just a really strong message that's coming through for, for Capricorn. Okay, 
But then I got into the Sagittarius reading and one of the first cards that came out, actually, no, the very first card in the overall energy, was it? No, I'm sorry. It was in the pre-shuffle. The pre-shuffle was, Capric was, was the devil or Capricorn. Um, the very first card in the pre-shuffle. So uh, you might be dealing with a Sagittarian. And that's funny because the Queen of Wands was saying, was saying Ca Sagittarius to me. Now, I was obviously I was being logical and like, okay, well, I just did the Sagittarius reading. Well, you could be dealing with a Sagittarius. Um, I got off track, but I wanted to share that with you because it was really interesting. It's very interesting. So let's see, Capricorn, what does this mean for you? Well, this is you. Mm, I just heard starting your life over and there could be fear surrounding that. Um, also, you could be dealing with healing uh, cycles of codependency, toxicity or whatnot in your life. But also the feeling that I get from the devil here for you specifically, Capricorn, is you like really settling into your own energy. Maybe for the first time in your life or maybe in a new way in your life, okay? You have the 10 of pentacles, all right? Um, I mean, this is you to a T, this 10 of pentacles energy, um, because you're very much the type of energy that's in something for the long haul, is not afraid to put in the time and the effort that's needed to bring something through, through to fruition. And that's what the 10 of pentacles represents. But then underneath that, you have the seven of swords. And finally, you've got the Knight of Cups underneath that. So. I'm going to be honest with you, Cap. The first, the, ma the major thing that I'm picking up on for you here is relationship. And I really try not to, like, I don't, I don't set an intention to do love readings. I just want to give you guys general guidance for your life in whatever needs to come forward the most. And what I'm picking up here is a relationship. There, this actually could also be a marriage. Um, this may be a marriage of convenience where you are married to someone or you're in a committed relationship with someone for the financial benefits, the physical benefits. Maybe it's just sex. It's entirely possible. Um, maybe it's just looks, like if you're a trophy wife or you're a trophy husband or you have a trophy wife or trophy husband. Um, what I really feel like is happening here, Capricorn, is either you are waking up to the deception that is kind of riddled in this relationship for you or you need to. <laughs> um... And I'm not, I'm not, I'm sorry, I'm not laughing at you. It's, it's just the way that came out just now. Either you're aware of it or you need to be. <laughs> sorry, guys. Um, I'm really just laughing at myself there. Uh, but honestly, I, I feel like it's so weird because what I feel like is happening here is any sort of deception that you're awakening to is opening your heart. Knight of Cups. And this could be an energy of you finally getting to the point where it's like, you know what, fuck this. I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to love myself. Because the Knight of Cups can kind of be a pretty selfish individual, a selfish energy. I feel like there's an awakening here happening or a realization or your eyes are finally being opened to something. Ten of Pentacles can also represent a lesson uh, learned. Um, I have been, because the 10 is a, the, the 10 is a number of a completion, right? And pentacles is the suit of earth, of physicality. And we do come here to earth in these physical three-dimensional bodies to learn, to grow, to expand, right? And so to me, the 10 of pentacles can represent the completion of a certain lesson that you have been trying to learn in your life, which can take a lot of time. Okay.
I'm also seeing in this Knight of Cups energy uh, an awakening towards extending love to others. And for some of you that I'm channeling for right now, this might be an energy in which you were never really able to do, willing to do, allowed yourself to do, maybe even never even learned how to do this. And you're awakening to it now. I see you wanting to give more in this Knight of Cups energy. But I'm also seeing some of you that are in some sort of re arranged relationship or marriage or a relationship or marriage of convenience, wanting to leave that behind, recognizing how that is deceptive, not only to yourself, but the other person that you're involved with and all the people around you. It could, ooh, wow, this is going deep, y'all. It could even be a situation in which you are recognizing how that is influencing generations before you, how you're showing generations, not before you, um, that after you, younger generations. You could be recognizing how you are teaching younger generations that love really doesn't matter. It's all about money and status. And that's not true. That is not what we want to be teaching our children. We want to be teaching our children that if you want to be in a relationship with someone, if you want to be in love or you, you, if you do love someone or you want to, be in, want to be in love, choose a relationship that is based on love, not finance or financial status or physical status or physical possessions. Because love is the only thing that, that can stand the test of time. You can lose, a, you can gain a possession and then lose it just as quickly as you had gained it. But love will always be there. Right? True love. Real love. That's kind of feels, it feels kind of specific, but it still feels like a very important message. And so now through all of that, if you're resonating with that side, through all of that, now you're looking for or you're opening yourself up to an opportunity that actually is a manifestation and a represent, representation of true love. True love, Knight of Cups. Okay? All right, Cappy. So let's get into the rest of the reading here for you. First half and second half of the reading, you could look at it as the first half, second half of your month. Personally, I, rep I recommend that you look at it as first half, second half of the reading because time is an illusion and energies are fluid and the energies and the messages really could intertwine all over the place. Yeah, but ultimately, please don't, allow, please don't let me tell you what to do. You do what's best for you, whatever resonates for you. If this resonates as the first half, second half of your month, then go with it, okay? Excellent. First set of surrounding energies in the first half of your reading here, Capricorn, you've got the Page of Swords. Excuse me. There's some spying going on. But the one thing I'm hearing the most is seeking and understanding. I am picking up that some of you are spying on a significant other because you might feel like they're cheating on you. Okay. Now, it's all about your intention there. If you're trying to figure out what's actually going on around you because you know something, something shady is going on, something, something's fishy here. If you're just trying to understand, you're just trying to, you're seeking to understand, to know what it is you need to do for yourself, okay. But if you're being passive aggressive, is something that I'm hearing, if you're being passive aggressive, if you're spying on people just for shits and giggles, if you're spying on people just to create drama, I do not recommend that. Karma will bite you in the ass. So any of you Capricorns out there that I'm channeling for, there could be some of there could be some cross watchers that are spying on the Capricorn. The same goes for you. If you are just trying to understand, okay. You're just trying to figure it out so that you know what's best for you to do, okay. But if you're trying to cause trouble, I would recommend you stay away from that energy. But ultimately, there is a desire to, to know. There is a desire to understand what's going on here. I'm picking up on a family situation in which things just don't seem, feel, or look right. And someone is trying to figure out why. And I don't think there's anything wrong with that, especially if you're trying to preserve your family, if you're trying to preserve your health, your well-being, your state of well-being, the well-being of your family, maybe even your children. Absolutely. But if you're just trying to cause trouble, 
like for some of you, I feel like it would be better for you to just get out of the situation instead of trying to stir the pot or kick up dust to figure something out, to just prove to yourself that you were right. Mm -mm. That's your ego and that's gonna cause more trouble and it's gonna backfire is what I'm hearing. So some of you may just need to cut your losses and get the F up out of there. No questions asked, you, I mean, just go. Others might need to find some information out. Okay. Page of Swords is coupled with ha! the sun. Well, yeah, some of you are looking for illumination. You're seeking illumination. Okay. Now that that is good. Now the sun is the best card in the deck most optimistic card in the deck. So you're either about to find out some information that's really going to help you move forward or the universe is kind of trying to say to you, um, things are not as bad as they seem. You really should stop looking now. <laughs> you might be making it worse by looking so hard or looking so deeply, I'm hearing. Okay, second set of surrounding energies for you, Capricorn. We have the Seven of Cups. Mm. So, yeah, there could be, there could be, for a vast majority of you, there really could be some illumination that you need that's going to help you deal with this energy, this confusion that you might be feeling. Something's up. Something doesn't feel right. Okay. Do your best to figure it out. But make sure your intentions are in the best place. Again, don't go seeking information just to tear somebody down. Seek information to help you decide what it is you need to do to maintain your health and well-being. All right? Seven of Cups is coupled with, oof, the Five of Cups. All right. Some of you are in a place right now of despair. Like, I don't know what to do. You've been left in a place that is so depressing that it's all just swirling around you and you're confused as all get out. And this page of swords with the sun is you trying to break out of your depression. I totally understand that. Okay. Okay. Remember, just keep in mind, everything's going to be okay. All right. I'm hearing the best is yet to come. So good. Stay with it. Don't lose faith in yourself now, or ever, for that matter. <laughs> your challenge in the first half of your reading here, the Nine of Pentacles. Okay. Oh, oh God. All right. Some of you are facing divorce. Some of you are facing singlehood. Your challenge is to stand up on your own two feet. Some of you really may be seeking sunlight in unending overcast because of something that has happened in your life. Maybe you got, you're dealing with a, a strong breakup. But look, oh God, guys, look. If you're dealing with a breakup and you're seeking some sort of information, number one, to make yourself feel better. Mm, I would caution you with that. It's better for you to feel your emotions instead of mask them or hide them or try to devalue them. Or if you're seeking information to retaliate, uh -uh. again, karma will bite you in the ass. But your challenge here is being single is standing on your own two feet, is finding your autonomy, maybe for the first time, maybe again, getting yourself back up on your feet, acquiring, maybe for the first time or again, your independence, and then maintaining that independence. Yeah? Nine of Pentacles is coupled with the Two of Swords. But you sure don't want to, huh? Okay, I'm hearing, it's not that I don't want to, it's just that I feel like I can't. Well, that's that devil energy trying to tear you down. 
You absolutely can. Do anything the fuck you want. So with that said, with that said, if you want to go around and seek information to tear somebody's life down the way they feel you they way the way you feel they've torn you down by all means be my guest just understand you're gonna have to deal with the karmic reparations yes so don't blame me when you get your ass bit by the karma you created yourself okay he <laughs> just i'm just saying you can do whatever the fuck you want please don't let me tell you what to do but somebody's got to get their mind right here because they're allowing themselves to be, ah, and that could be what this Seven of Swords energy is. You could be allowing yourself to believe that you are not worthy or deserving or independent at all. And that's what's blocking you, Two of Swords. Because this Two of Swords doesn't feel like an inability to see. This feels like a refusal. This really feels like a refusal. So someone actively could be fighting tooth and nail to find some out, to figure something out, find some sort of information to make everything okay again. And if you're doing that at the, uh, 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 mm, this, is, this is some twisted energy I'm picking up on here. But if you're doing that at the expense of um, someone else's free will, that is not going to end well, okay? That is not going to end well. Entrapment never ends well for the, be for the individual that's trying to trap somebody else. Okay? Your closing message or potential outcome, Capricorn, in the first half of your reading here, you've got the High Priestess. Okay. Secrets. Intuition. I feel like some things are going to be revealed. But also, this kind of feels like a rite of passage. The high priestess often feels like a gatekeeper to me. So some of you may be leaving behind some sort of establishment um, that could be religious or spiritual in nature, but you're, you're leaving that behind you because you're starting to get downloads from the universe. You're starting to become ready to really start to comprehend and integrate some of the higher lessons that the universe has to teach us. And that actually could be what the Page of Swords and the Sun is representing for you. The information that you're seeking that's going to illuminate your life in ways that dogma never could have. That's beautiful. <clears throat> the High Priestess is coupled with, yes, the Eight of Cups. Go ahead, Capricorn. I mean, you're, you're, you are gaining some sort of insights that are allowing you to walk away. I like that a lot. I really like that. <clears throat> All right, Cap. <clears throat> Getting into the second half of your reading here. First set of surrounding energies, you've got... Ooh, the Queen of Cups. And now the Queen of Cups came out in the Sagittarius reading too. So you might want to check that out. This could be, they could be, again, you could be dealing with a Sagittarius. Now the Queen of Cups and the High Priestess are the two most psychically attuned individuals in the deck. Obviously the High Priestess is one tier above the, the Queen of Cups because the High Priestess is of major arcana. The Queen of Cups is minor arcana, but they are still intuitive highly intuitive and the queen of cups represents the embodiment of unconditional love but what i want to tell you here is the queen of cups is asking you to honor your emotions face your emotions you see how that queen is staring intently into her cup face those emotions capricorn don't run from them don't hide from them face them okay <laughs> okay <laughs> um but honor them. There's something in your emotional reality that you need to look at intently because it's going to help you on your journey somehow. It might, um, I feel like it will, it'll be the revelation that's coming through with this high priestess that will help you walk away from some sort of toxic cycle. Queen of Cups is coupled with, ooh, the King of Wands. Wow. 
This is Capricorn, not, I'm sorry, not Capricorn. This is Cancerian energy, which actually is your direct opposite within the Zodiac Capricorn. And this is also Leo energy with the, with the King of Wands. And now it doesn't have to be those two, but technically that's what they represent as the Queens are the cardinal signs, which for water, that's Capricorn, that's, I'm sorry, for water, that's Cancer, fire, that's Aries, earth, that's Capricorn, which is you, and then air, that's Libra. The kings are the fixed signs. So fire, that's Leo. Um, Earth, that's Taurus. Air is Aquarius and water is Scorpio. But it doesn't have to be those. But I like this combination a lot. Now, me personally, I have Leo and Cancerian energy in me. Um, in Eastern astrology, my rising sign is Leo and my moon sign is Cancer. And I often resonate very strongly with Leo and cancer energy so i personally really really like this combination but this to me is the fire and passion and self-confidence of the fire energy in the leo or the king of wands focused intently on the feminine receptive intuitive loving unconditionally loving of the queen of cups or cancerian energy um it's almost as if your masculine and feminine sides are kind of really want to work in tandem with each other because I'm really seeing this King of Wands as staring intently at the Queen of Cups saying, okay, what do we do next? Having all the confidence in the world in themselves. All right, all right, Queen of Cups. All right, my inner feminine. What is the action I need to take next in my life? And I do feel like you're very passionate about it, or at least that's what's coming through with this King of Wands, because the King of Wands is all kinds of passion. <laughs> okay. Second set of surrounding energies for you, Capricorn. We have uh, ooh, the Seven of Wands. I like that. Boundaries. Blockages, sure, but I'm just seeing it as boundaries. Uh, in order for you to really be successful here, Capricorn, you need to place boundaries, all right? You need to fortify your boundaries. You need to redefine your boundaries, whatever. Some of you may already have these in place. I feel like those of you that are already in this masculine-feminine com combination have those good boundaries in place. Keep them. You might want to check and be like, just, just make sure. See if there's any little other fortifications that you could benefit from, but... Yeah, Seven of Wands is coupled with, oof, the Four of Cups. Uh, no, but this is not a bad thing. This is the, your barriers, your blockages, I guess it's coming through as blockages. Some of you are dealing with blockages that have to do with boredom or unrequited love or missed opportunities. Opportunities, and this feels like from the past, opportunities that you feel like you've missed. I mean, yeah, you may have missed them, but it could have been for a reason, a better reason than you're thinking. You might be focused on the fact that you just missed this opportunity and now you don't know if it's ever going to come back around or if you're ever going to get anything like it. But honestly, if you missed the opportunity, there was probably a really good reason for it and it's not anything bad. It's probably just wasn't in alignment with you at that time or wasn't the best thing for you at that time or you probably maybe you just weren't ready for it at that time. But other than that, I am seeing you putting up walls, barriers, um, um, or boundaries around anything that makes you feel some sort of sense of lack or um, inadequacy um, or boredom. I, I, I see you more, mo I mostly see you blocking out this energy, not allowing it to get you down. And that's a good thing. Your challenge in the second half of your reading here, Capricorn, you have the Two of Pentacles. All right, the Two of the, the <laughs> it's funny, you have the Two of Swords in the first half of the reading in the challenge, and now you have the Two of Pentacles in the second half of the reading in the challenge. And then in the first reading, in the first half of the reading, you have the Seven of Cups in the second set of surrounding energies, and then you have the Seven of Wands in the second set of surrounding energies in the second half of your reading. I think that's kind of cool. Anyway, the challenge here for the two in the second half of your reading is the two of pentacles. It's keeping things balanced. You're good at that, Capricorn. You're good at that. But you may have to 
put a little more effort into it right now, or at least during this circumstance, then you may be, huh, then you may be willing to, or you may be aware of, or then you may be used to. All right. Two of Pentacles is coupled with, hey now, judgment. I'm excited because I'm seeing judgment. You, on the other hand, are like, holy fuck. Yeah, I get it. I totally get it. And that's why you're probably having to work so hard to keep the balance in your life physically because there is a massive change happening. There's a, there's a massive wake-up wake call. Also a resurrection. You're being handed a second chance, a fresh start. There may be a lot of things that you have to overcome or accomplish or get done in order to really step into this second chance, this resurrection, this redemption. Um, and that's the challenge, right? But ultimately, it's gonna be worth it. Absolutely, it's absolutely worthwhile. Closing message or potential outcome for you, Capricorn, in the second half of your reading. Here you've got the star. Didn't this wait? The star came out in your pre-shuffle. Ha! Would you look at that? Wish fulfillment, Capricorn. Absolutely wish fulfillment. On a big, big soul level. But you just have to get through this phase first. And to be quite honest with you, I know you're the type of energy that's like, whatever, hunker down, batten down the hatches, hatches let's get to work, bitches. Excellent. But there is no way that you can get around the work you have to do for this. You will not be able to reach that next cycle. You will not be able to close the situation out until you do this work. And like I said, for a lot of you, doing the work is not a problem. But in this situation, this might be work that you're not used to doing. You might be really versed, really well versed in doing work physically to create physical, tangible things. But when it comes to spiritual work, that could be the furthest, the furthest thing from you or to you, some, really foreign to you. And I'm not trying to tell you that to scare you or like make you feel any more anxious than you may already be feeling. I, that just was a message that was coming through really strong. You have got to do this work in order to move, to progress from judgment to the world, which is the completion of the cycle, and then ultimately from the world to the fool, which is the start of a new one, okay? But right now, in this moment, or at the time that you're watching this video and it's resonate, resonating for you, you are going through that, you're, you're experiencing the wake up call. Like you're literally in your bed with your alarm blaring right now. And you're kind of laying there wondering, gosh, do I just turn it off? Like, do I press the snooze button and go back to sleep or do I just get up right now? That's your choice. Just know you have to do the work in order to catalyze the completion of this cycle. Yes? And ultimately, your wishes will be granted. And these are some wishes that are really strong. Like some of the deepest things you have ever wished for in your life. These are your soul's desires, your soul's wishes rather than just like your ego, yeah? The star is coupled with the Six of Cups. I told you, I told you, some of the deepest wishes you have ever had in your life. Some of these wishes and dreams could stem from past lifetimes even. Like they go that, they run that deep in you. Okay. Let's move on to your oracle section now, Capricorn. Get some closing oracle guidance for you for this message for the month of July 2019. July for my Capricorns, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus. Last shuffle here. All right. Best message, please, Spirit, to close out this reading for Capricorn for the month of July 2019. 
15. Here it is. Oh, wow. I'm just going to take this one. Yeah, I'm just going to take this one. And you have card number 26. Relax the hold of darkness and be at cause. I don't know if you guys can hear the music, but it's July 4th when I'm recording this and it's like almost three o'clock in the afternoon. Oh no, it's 318. So now the parties are about to start. So it might get a little louder, but anyway, welcome to Brooklyn. <laughs> All right, uh, 26. Here we go. Dear sacred rebel, this moment in your life requires great courage. Fortunately, you possess that in bucket loads. You are being asked to allow yourself to be lifted out of one level of known reality and into the next level of higher voltage reality. Higher voltage reality requires a more absolute trust and a heart that is surrendered into the greater heart of the universe so that life can happen to us, through us, and with us more quickly, more radically, more beautifully, and more boldly. You are now being invited into this new reality where things happen quickly and according to bold, loving optimism. This is a reality that not only, I'm sorry, this is a reality not only of potential, but of manifestation of the great big cosmic yes. To access this reality, you have to leap from known waters and others may think you're crazy for doing so. You have to leave behind the dark, weighty grip of hesitation, procrastination, second guessing, and the belief you have to do everything on your own. You may fear for your life. How will you be safe in the wild electrical pulse of so much aliveness? How will you function without the hazy, sleep-inducing paralysis of playing it safe, taking too long and placing lesser priorities above your sacred art of life? How will you hold yourself back if you don't hold on to fear? You do not need to worry about such things. Life is wild, but it is also wise. It is a force of startling raw awakening at times, but it is also the natural process of evolution where all things... I'm sorry, where all things mature according to a seasonal cycle in right timing. You are part of, not apart from, that process. The invitation to shift gears and jump on board the express train of life will feel exhilarating and perhaps also challenging. When you are in the hold of the darkness, you will feel pushed to turn away, to imagine it is all too much, and to create excuses about how your desires aren't grounded enough, that you are being too flighty or flaky, or that you are not living, quote, in the real world. <clears throat> that is fear talking, not truth. The devil. <laughs> Sorry, I lost my place. That is fear talking, not truth. Oh goodness, oh goodness. There it is. If the sacred, re <clears throat> sorry. <clears throat> if the sacred rebel is not awakened, we will continue to live in a culture drenched in fear and distrust of nature. Those without awakened hearts don't yet understand what nature knows. She knows timing. She knows life and death. She knows the creative process. She just knows and it can be trusted to support us her own creations in becoming all that we can become. Does this mean that we become passive and just flow along like a limp leaf detached from the tree and blown about randomly by the breeze? No. Being free of the dark hold empowers us to take up our cause. This means being free to act and affirm the intuitive feelings we have by following up on them. This is painting like someone who has lost their mind completely free and from the heart. It means writing even though you have no conscious idea of what you are writing, even as the words are streaming forth upon the page before your rather curious eyes. And it means speaking about your work, never hiding it away. Allow it to breathe the fresh air and be held in the gaze of another. Detach from the darkness that would say it's not enough or must be the best thing ever, whatever that means, in order to be worthy of a place in the world. Instead, just let it be what it is. 
it might fly, it might endure, and it might not. All of nature, including you and your passions and dreams, will be what is needed, when it is needed, and how it is needed according to wisdom. We just have to trust in this, within ourselves and within nature herself through the flow of life. And participate! You are asked to go within and imagine diving deep off the edge of what you have known. There is so much more calling to you now. It's your time. Leap. So there you have it, Capricorn. Thank you so much for tuning in. I hope this was helpful for you. Again, if you would like a look into your own personal situation, please don't hesitate to email me. All of the information is in the description box below. With that, I hope you have a great month, and I look forward to connecting with you again for the month of August. Yes? Mwah! Bye!